Hello everyone and welcome to the 805 Focus. I'm Christine Davis. Here at TVSB, we like to feature worthy non-profit organisations making a difference in our community. One such group is Girls Incorporated, otherwise known as Girls Inc. They've been enriching the lives of girls in the area for over 50 years. Joining me today to discuss the organisation is Executive Director, Monica Spears, welcome to the show. Thank you. Christina Webster, the Goleta Valley Centre Director. Hi. Hi. Board Member, Tracy Jenkins. Hi, Tracy. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today, folks. Thank so, you. Monica, let's start with you. Sure. For those out there who haven't heard of Girls Inc., what is it and how did it come about? So Girls Incorporated is, of course, a nonprofit organization, and our mission is to inspire all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. And the way that we do that is by offering girls ages four and a half to 18 years old each and every weekday with after school and summer educational enrichment opportunities and activities. Uh, the organization was formed actually over 150 years ago on the east coast of this country. And then Girls Incorporated of Greater Santa Barbara was formed almost 60 years ago. So we've been doing this work in this community for quite a long time now. Uh, we serve about 1,200 girls in this community each and every year. Wow. So you can imagine over 60 years, that's quite a few young girls that we've impacted the lives of and therefore have really made a difference worldwide in all of the girls that we have helped educate over the years and inspire to be strong, smart, and bold. 1,200, that's a, that's a big number for, yeah. for this community. It is, it really is, and we're very proud of that. Uh, we do have a strategic goal to reach 30% more girls over the period of a three-year time span, which would put us at about the 1500 mark of serving girls with impact in the year of 2015 and beyond. Now, um, you said it started on the East Coast about 150 years ago, yes. which is amazing. Um, back then, how did, how did that come about? Exactly. So it's really quite an interesting story. It was about the time of the Industrial Revolution. And at that time, um, in Waterbury, Connecticut, in sort of a mill town, as girls were starting to actually go to work in the textile mills and factories, they started forming this camaraderie, or what we might refer to today as networking with each other. And so our early name of the organization was Girls Club. And so it really started as a forum in which young women and girls could connect and communicate with each other on sort of an ongoing day-to-day -day basis. And so from there, it developed into these clubs with clubhouses. And in fact, in the Santa Barbara area, the way that the girls club was formed here was that a woman was listening to a girl from another area on the radio talking about a girls club. And the woman thought, well, why couldn't we have something like that here in this community? And so it was formed at that point, and the mission at the time was to help girls become good wives, homemakers, and citizens. So while those are still very important roles that we as women have, uh, it was certainly a different mission than inspiring girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Strong, smart, and bold. What wonderful goals and what a great motto. Um, Christina. Yes. Goleta Valley. Yes. How much activity do you have in, in that area? Because you also have a downtown uh, office, don't you? We do. We have a center that's in Goleta, our Goleta Valley Center, and a center that's downtown Santa Barbara as well. Um, and we also have a gymnastics department, so we won't want to forget about gymnastics. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of activity going on right now at the Goleta Valley Center. So we, um, our capacity is 195 girls a day, and we are hitting that. So we have reached some of our growth goals and are bursting at the seams, um, which we are really, really excited about. So we have a lot of activity going on. Now when you say activity, what sort of activities ah, do you offer for the girls? Yes. Because I know, I have to say that I'm very fond of Girls Inc. because my seven-year-old daughter has participated yes. in activities there, mm -hmm. has been there. 
and actually has done the gymnastics camp there. I thought so. Um, and it's a wonderful place and uh, she loved it. Um, so tell the folks out there okay. some of the activities and some yeah. of the services that you offer to the Girls Inc. participants. Great. So during um, both our after school and summer programs, the girls are able to choose which types of activities they want to do. So they get to sign up for classes, much like signing up for classes at a college level or something where there's a class schedule that goes out each quarter and they can choose from anything from library skills, computers, um, cooking and culinary arts, um, sports and athletics. We have currently a drama production that is happening and we'll be having our play um, next week. We have culture classes, language classes, art, um, lots of science and hands-on fun science activities for the girls to do. So we offer a little bit of everything. Um, so the girls are really able to find something that is of interest to them and that they're excited about learning more about and participate in those. It seems like you offer a lot of areas of interest that otherwise the girls would not be able to get either in school or after school. Yes, that's certainly one of our hopes as well. So part of our programming is both to be intentional in what we're offering to the girls um, and that there's always something we want them to get out of achieving um, in, and participating in the program and also compensatory. So we really do want to offer activities that girls could not um, receive elsewhere in the community and really supplement um, some of those activities that might have been taken out of the schools or that they're not aver, able to offer at the same levels in the schools anymore. Now, uh, Tracy, why did you become a board member? Why and how? Why and how? <laughs> uh, I'm actually fairly new to the area. I moved here a little over four years ago, and a good friend of mine, um, Paige Beard, was on the board of Girls Inc. at that time, and she invited me to participate in uh, one of the events that Girls Inc. puts on called Take Our Daughters to Work Day. And I went to this event and was just overwhelmed with um, what Girls Inc. was offering in the community and I asked if there are other ways that I could get involved and of course they snagged me right away <laughs> <laughs> and um, I began volunteering uh, working with a few of the committees that were um, in place at that time a marketing committee was one of them and in addition I put together a volunteer program to help community members uh, work at the center after school with the girls in a homework help environment and apparently some members of the board recognized this and thought maybe we should um, invite her to join the board. And so I joined the board about uh, almost two and a half years ago and um, have been very active since that time. Are you proud of what you're seeing? Are you glad you became involved? I am so proud of what I'm seeing and I would say that the board that um, operates for Girls Inc. is one of the most professional and engaged boards on nonprofits that I have ever seen. We have an incredible group of people who are professional and collaborative and they really have the best interest of the organization in mind and so we're looking for ways to support the work that Monica does as executive director as well as both center directors so that they can be their best and really impact the girls because in the end what really matters is that the girls are having the experience that we expect. So we're trying to do our job so they can do their job. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Now Monica, it sounds like a bunch of fun, and I know <laughs> it is, but that's just one of the goals, isn't it? Uh, sure. Tell me a little bit more about some of the goals that you have and some of the work that you are doing that's achieving mm -hmm. uh, changes sure. in the girls in the community. So we often, in partially in a joking way, talk about the fact that we are trying to work ourselves out of having jobs because we hope that someday there will never be a need for an organization like Girls Inc. in the sense that we're working very hard and one of our highest priority goals is to ensure that girls today have every opportunity that anyone else has regardless of economic, cultural, different uh, factors that might influence that. So part of our program, and really the foundation of all of our programming, is to ensure that girls, just as you said earlier, 
have the opportunities to participate in things that whether it's societal or economically or whatever the reasoning, that they may not otherwise have those opportunities. For example, math and science. That's been an area that unfortunately girls have not necessarily always been fostered or encouraged in. And so while we do structure all of our programming so that they're designed in ways where the girls really are enjoying the activities, we also sneak in that education piece so that they're not only having a positive experience in this example of uh, doing science activities, but they're also really gaining the knowledge, skills, and attitudes necessary to be able to excel in those areas as well. So it's exposing them to different opportunities and experiences while also creating the foundation that they will need to carry them through to be able to have a rewarding and successful future. Wonderful. And Christine, I believe you have quite a lot of physical activities there at mm -hmm. Girls in Goleta. We do. Which mm -hmm. is fantastic because I know that PE is one of the areas that has been affected by budget cuts. And even for the schools that do have that, it is limited what the girls you know, can, can actually do. be involved in. Uh -huh. Tell me a little bit about some of that. Okay, well we offer all different types of physical activities from just getting your body moving um, to building up some different motor skills to actually participating on teams and playing in a sports league. So um, we do yoga, we do international sports, we'll be part of the Parks and Recreation Basketball League next quarter and playing other teams. Um, we had a soccer program where we were able to partner um, with the Seoul soccer program this past fall, and so we had a soccer team that happened. So a little bit of everything once again, but golf, g golf at the Santa Barbara Center, and my favorite. Currently, we're also partnering with a few different surfing organizations, oh. and we're able to take the girls surfing as well. So that's something new that we're really excited about this year too. That is fantastic mm -hmm. because that's something that really very few girls get the opportunity to do unless they've right, got a family right. member or a friend. Someone who knows how to do that it and the equipment and transporting them. So That's right, the, yeah. cost, the cost of all of that right. is prohibitive. Yeah, and we also do you know other things in the community, hiking and going outdoors and participating in nature, so things like that too. Maybe and the triathlon. Yeah, I was oh, going to say. And this, Tracy, this, yeah. This, oh, this, talk about do well, tell, do tell. We had the um, fortune this past summer, we were named the uh, nonprofit beneficiary of the Montecito Bank and Trust Santa Barbara Triathlon. Mm. So we spent the year um, engaging the community in various ways and letting them know that we were going to be the nonprofit. And uh, as part of that, one of the staff members thought that it would be great to add a triathlon training program for girls to participate in so that on triathlon day, they could complete this. And anyone who's done a triathlon knows that that's a strong, smart, and bold activity. Mm -hmm. So we had about a half a dozen or more girls participate all summer long, and they learned how to bike. And we did partnerships with um, the Bike Coalition who helped girls get bikes and helmets fit, and we worked with local high school coaches who came out and ran and swam with the girls to get them confidence and the swim was in the ocean, they had to bike on the roads, and then they had to run. And we had, um, each girl was matched up with an adult partner who did the race with them. And uh, that was one of my joys. I actually did the race with one of these girls. Oh. And I had so much fun watching this young lady who was maybe 10, just complete this activity and just um, seeing how, what the confidence that she gained in doing this. And so it's really neat that Girls Inc. can see what's happening and then react to it in many ways and find ways to get the girls um, involved in that. It's an exciting thing to be part of. I can't imagine a 10 year old triathlete. Oh, it's incredible. It was wow. Incredible. Yeah, the and they their faces afterwards. I mean, mm -hmm. they just, you could just see the confidence that came, yeah. it was wonderful. That's fantastic. Now, the other side of things, I know there's a lot of cultural activities at, uh, at Girls Inc. Tell me about that. I know there's a lot of different types of dance. There we are. There are different types of dance. We try to really work um, a cultural awareness into all different types of activities. So both in the library through learning, uh, learning about different authors, um, studying different cultural celebrations through books. Um, in cooking, one of our cooking instructors really likes to teach the girls about 
um, food from around the world and how culture and climate and topography all play into the food that is eaten in different regions. Um, we do different cultural sports. So really, we're trying to um, bring culture into all different types of activities that we're doing as well. Great. Uh, yeah, I know my little girl loved all the different types of dancing. Mm -hmm. um, now, I wanted to find out who are the instructors? So I'll let Christina speak specifically to the mm -hmm. qualifications, and I will just lay the groundwork in saying that we do try to hire um, instructors that have uh, an interest, an experience, and knowledge and background in youth instruction and then we provide a great deal of training specifically around gender specific implementation of programming and we have what's called a Girls Inc. philosophy. So we are sure to educate our instructors in the ways that we expect them to be able to deliver programming and interact with our girls as an organization. And then in terms of the specifics of our instructors, I'll let Christina speak to that. So Monica talked a little bit about the qualifications that they have to have coming into the position. So um, because we are a child care um, licensed facility as well, they have to have a certain number of units um, at the college level um, in order to be able to be at our facility. And then we go through background checks and things like that. But we have um, some instructors who are in college currently. It's a great part-time job for them. Um, Many of them are working towards getting their credentials or in credential programs right now um, in the education field and getting early childhood education units. But then we also have um, staff who have started um, as college uh, students have graduated and are continuing with the organization because um, they care for it so much. So we're really, really fortunate to have such amazing people come and work for us and be so dedicated in what we're, they're doing with the girls. And that's really, the heart of the programming is the staff who are so creative in what they come up with um, to offer to the girls and so dedicated in really building these lasting um, relationships with the girls as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't already, you must soon be having some girls that have gone through Girls Inc. <laughs> wanting to come back and yes. instruct. Is that yes. happening? Yes, it is. One of my staff currently um, was one of my girls when oh. I um, <laughs> originally taught art classes way back when um, at the Santa Barbara Center. So yes, I have been with the organization now um, for 13 years. So I have watched many girls grow up and am extremely fortunate that they do want to come back and continue to be part of the organization and work with us as well. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Now Tracy, your daughter was actually a volunteer at she the organization. Was. Tell me a little bit about that because I know that that's one area where I'm sure you could always yes, use definitely. help. When uh, I was, uh, I was going to say roped in. <laughs> To get involved. She means but I that really, in the best way. Yes, because I, 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 sure. just, I just love the organization, was so happy to help, was setting up the homework help program, which uh, happens at each center between 5 and 5.45 or 5 and 6, 5.15 and 6, depending on how their homework works. And I suggested that my daughter, who was in high school at that time, and as you probably know, all of the high school kids in the area are required to do 60 hours of community service. Um, and so I suggested that she talk to Girls Inc. And, and get involved. And so it ended up being one of her um, most favorite places that she volunteered is these little third grade girls mm -hmm. that she could sit with. And she had one girl in particular who really seemed to like her that she ended up with each time. And interestingly enough, I think that interaction has helped propel my daughter, who's now a sophomore in college and she's looking to do public policy and education. Ah. And so I think it... Um, her time at Girls Inc. had some influence on that. That's wonderful. Yeah. It sounds like the children, the girls, I know <laughs> a lot of them are teenagers, um, are getting a lot of education, getting a lot of inspiration, learning some wonderful skills. What do you think some of these girls might be doing if they weren't at Girls Inc.? Well, I'll say that one of our goals, and I have been with the organization long enough to know that we are successful in achieving this goal, is to stop the cycle. Um, and that cycle will involve many things of which 
many are also negative. So is, is that what the video is about? To some degree it is. And so when I say stop the cycle, it may be a more specific cycle within a certain culture mm -hmm. or family, or it may be a cycle that is a national or worldwide phenomenon. Right. So things like, I was mentioning earlier, the sort of science and math piece, or it may be as serious and specific as a domestic violence or a substance abuse sort of issue. So it's really providing girls, again, with that network, environment, education, and foundation to help prepare them for success and fulfillment in life, as opposed to continuing something, whether it's a learned or an observed behavior or situation. So yes, the video addresses a lot of that, and it's something that we found to be specifically true through the girls over generations that we've served. Well, let's have a look at that video that we've been talking about. It gives a very clear picture of the sort of work that Girls Inc. does around the country. Uh, here it is now. I'm at risk of thinking there's just no point in trying. I'm at risk of looking in the mirror and hating what I see. I'm at risk of regretting what I do just to join the crowd. I'm at risk of being told not to tell. And you would never know it by looking at me. But with Girls Inc. in my corner, there for me every day, believing in me, showing me what's possible, I can be strong enough to respect myself and my body. To say I can rather than I can't. To say no with no apology. To be a leader. To finish school. To own my future. To break the cycle. Girls Inc. believes every girl can succeed. That's why the trained professionals of Girls Inc. are there for our girls every day. Supporting, mentoring, and guiding them in a safe, girls-only environment building bonds that last for years and change that lasts a lifetime. Girls Inc. gives girls the tools they need to boldly face challenges, to resist peer pressure, to be the first in their families to go to college, to beat the odds. With Girls Inc. in her corner, every girl can be healthy, confident and resilient. She'll do more than dream about her potential. She'll reach it. With you in my corner. With you in my corner. I will not be another statistic. I will fight for myself. For my future. With you in my corner, I will win. Fuel her fire and she will change the world. Girls Inc. Inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Wow, that was very moving. That was that was really moving. So, I mean, it's I know it's hard for me every time I see it to not start to, to tear up, and it 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 really it, it hits you right where the heart is, and I think that's one of the reasons again why I got involved with. Girls Inc. at a board level, um, because if we can, through the intentional programming that Girls Inc. provides, really change some of the course of these girls' lives, it's worth it. We, we need to get the message out. We need to help the community understand that it, it takes their energy and their interest and, and their dollars, actually, to help us provide that kind of programming and let these girls succeed in life. So, <clears throat> I mean, just think, yeah, just thinking about the video every time I start to, to get a little teary about it, and uh, it makes me want to go out there and work more. <laughs> so.
for the organization. What specifically is making you teary? When you recognize that a, a girl has been in a situation, and we've heard stories that uh, Christina and, and Monica have shared at board meetings about girls who have been in situations, and through the influence of our programming have been able to confront someone in a way that they hadn't been able to before to stop something so that their behavior allows them based on what we've uh, given them as tools that they can then go out and become a positive influence in the community that is something that anyone would want to be a part of and uh, it just makes me feel proud mm -hmm. and you know half the time I cry tears of joy because and so it's a combination it's yes that's happening but yes we're doing something to, to make a difference and it's letting the girls know they do have a voice they have, they have a voice mm -hmm. and and girls Inc is in their corner and we are you know we're trying to fuel their fire and let them know that we are here for them so that they can change the course of all, all the people's in their lives as well <coughs> that's fantastic well before we go I just wanted to find out how can folks out there who want to become involved in Girls Inc how can they help where do you need the help so there are a variety of ways that people can be in the corner of Girls Inc and therefore in the lives of these girls um, and that would include things like volunteering certainly Tracy has mentioned our homework help program which is a way you can work directly with some of our girls but you could also volunteer for single sorts of events or occasions or by serving on a committee or the board so there are many volunteer opportunities and we would welcome people to visit our website and learn more or give us a quick call and we'd be happy to orient you um, in addition to that, of course, contributions are always helpful because we do provide financial aid for about 70% of the girls that are involved in our program. So that really does make a significant difference in us being able to reach and serve girls maybe most economically in need. And then thirdly, I would say the other way that people can help, and they can do this on their own time schedule and at their own comfort level, but that's by um, serving as an advocate for Girls and Girls Inc. So really letting girls know that there are people in our community that care about them and want to help give them that those opportunities and that voice and really help empower and encourage them. So simply by serving as an advocate for Girls or Girls Inc., they are doing uh, a significant thing for the girls of our community. Wonderful. What is your website? So our website is www.girlsincsb.org. Fantastic. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you and we wish you continued success and, and all the best for the future thank of you. Girls Inc. Santa Barbara. Thank you very much. for having us. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, folks at home, if you'd like to know more about our show or would like to contact us about a story you'd like to see, our website is tvsb.tv. I'd like to thank the crew, our staff and volunteers who make this show possible. And we hope you join us next time for the 805 Focus. I'm Christine Davis. Bye-bye. Thank you.